This afternoon at Romford Film Festival, I'm talking to the guys from Ice Cream on the Beach, which is a, a locally shot film, filmed all in Lee, was it? Is yeah, it more or less? Lee, Lee South End, Shoebury West. Bit of Shoebury Ness, yeah. So the first question I have to ask you is your co-directors, how easy is it to co-direct? Um, so we... We, we, we've known each other for like years anyway, like we met in college when we were 16, we went to uni together, we did film production there, we worked together on our first job as editors together as well, so we've always had like quite a good working relationship. Um, but the thing we did for on set was we tried as much as possible to sort of split the responsibilities down the middle, and it wasn't a case of like one of us was solely responsible for one area and one was solely responsible for the other, but in terms of working with crew and cast, we tried to make sure that if it was anything to do with the actors, that was Alex's department, they would talk to him. We'd try and keep that separate. If it was anything to do with crew, that was me. Um, if I wanted the actors to do something a bit different, I would talk to Alex first and he'd pass that information on. So I don't know, it, to, for us it seemed to work. Yeah, I, don't think I, I, I quite like sitting down. So <laughs> I was like at the monitors quite a lot yeah, sitting. I was, I was running around doing And Mike was more running around. <laughs> so that, that's, yeah, it works well. One of you's lazy and the other one's not so lazy. When I made my first film, um, a friend of mine, Adam Girash, he uh, said to me, oh, he said, I've got a tip for you. And I said, oh, go on then. And he said, sit down a lot. And that was his tip. Yeah, I Thanks, wish I heard Adam. that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, I've, I've thrown you the curveball at the start, but let's talk <laughs> a little bit about... Um, the film as a whole. Can you explain to anybody that won't have seen it what the the story synopsis is? Yeah, so it's 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 set in nineteen eighties, surrounds a girl called Emily. She basically remembers something from her past that happened to her father. She searches for answers and then her friends start getting killed and she's trying to figure out what's going on. At the same time, there's a police investigation going on into these murders. They're trying to figure out what's going on. Maybe there's a cover-up. That, that was very vaguely vague and unspoilery, what I'm... Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but of course, the unique about, fit way about your film is you've done something quite unique in terms of the current film market. So what is it that you've done to your film that makes it so special? So we stupidly shot the entire thing in HD and then tried to make it look as much as possible like it was shot on a potato in like 1981. Um, some <laughs> shots are even shot in 4K. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's the most ridiculous part. Some shots are genuinely in 4K and we've tried to make it look like a really worn down VHS tape. The idea is that you've found this tape lost at the very back of a video shop like because no one's rented it out before. We, I think the thing we made this film for was like very much for a film festival crowd. Like we had, we had certain festivals in mind that we wanted to submit to and stuff like that. And we were like, we trust that at least those people would get it. It might not necessarily go beyond like go wider than that, but at least we made this film with like how we wanted it to be, and we know like our key audience would understand that. Um, and it has worked, I think. I think mo the majority of people, no, no one's sort of watched it and gone like, what is this? People do seem to get the theme sort of straight yeah, away. Yeah, and I think people are kind of attracted to that kind of nostalgic thing. I think we're luckily, uh, it's sort of, I guess it's because uh, a lot of filmmakers like working right now come from an era of watching a lot of things like this that it's slightly in the zeitgeist doing something a bit retro, doing something 80s and... Yeah, this sort of like look, like 80s, like look back I suppose is going on at the moment. When we started writing this and started shooting it, it was like, well, the initial writing was probably about 2014. Mm -hmm. So like it hadn't quite taken off like to what it is now. Um, so we've kind of rode that a little bit, I think. Yeah. But um, actually making it look a VHS tape is probably taking it a step further. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. No, no one else seems to want to do that so much. <laughs> So you're showing the film elsewhere, other than Romford. Um, do you find, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my judging panel, for example. Do you find there is a group of, uh, do you find there is an age group kind of cut off where there's that, that percentage that get it and there's that percentage that don't? And when, you, uh, when you've spoken to people about the film, have you had any encounters or any feedback about, you know, like the younger generation maybe not really understanding that? whole ethos behind it? Um, not personally, I don't think. No, like, maybe a little bit in family. Like, I think that there's probably a few people that are, you know, like my parents' age that 
probably weren't really super into like that kind of film anyway that don't quite get it and maybe like my younger youngest brother didn't quite get why we made it look awful kind of <laughs> <laughs> but no not not too much but i guess we've i guess we've kind of like catered to the audience we've shown it to so far so yeah, yeah maybe so haven't quite... the only the only two festivals it's played at so far have been um horror and scene south end and then starburst so which obviously quite genre, genre focused fest. festivals anyway so we've not really had that experience of watching it with the sort of like a wider audience um, but we've obviously sent it out for reviews and stuff, and that that's kind of gone well. But we, you don't really know mm. their ages or their sort of background so sure. much. I mean, I'm, I just just to save you any um, pain here, I really enjoyed the film. So yeah. just in yeah. case you think, just in case you think, I'm I'm steering this in a really <laughs> weird place. Um, but I did find that those of us that are, shall we say, forty upwards, really enjoyed it. Whereas those that were kind of maybe missed out that whole videotape thing and, you know, going into a video shop, mm. they just really didn't kind of get that whole Yeah, thing. but it's not overly surprising, I don't think. I think we kind of expected that. And even sort of like, there is a lot of, not even just the look of it, there's a lot of things about the film that when we were writing it and making it, we're like, there are, some people are not going to enjoy this. Some people are going to get quite angry at certain points in this film. Um, but... We've had some people who didn't like it, some people who do like it. It's, yeah, it does, it does definitely split people. We got an, a review that said you either like hate it or love it, and that's yeah. Great. I think I, that's I'd rather thing. that like it's better if someone dislikes it than and then or nothing, really then loves it, it. Then it's like, oh, okay. Do you have like a clear influence when you were making it? Is there you know like one or two films that you specifically thought, yeah, I love that film. I'm kind of want to. I don't know if it's necessary. Like, <coughs> there's probably not one or two specific films really like a very very wide yeah. selection of films right particularly slasher films yeah. Um, yeah yeah so like the the very initial script for this is completely unrecognisable to what the film actually was and that was you, you sort of wrote that on your own initially yeah which was, was more influenced. yeah it was very scream influenced more like 90s yeah. horror and, and then we sort of like just uh, our mutual like we both love horror movies but our mutual like where our sort of taste crossover is sort of like really sort of grimy cheesy 80s slasher um so like there's i don't know that we've taken bits and pieces from uh, there's, there's references i don't even get in this film like yeah. there's just so many of them friday the 13th series the burning yeah um, um they, they've got they've got a really obscure reference to snuff in there we've got like yes, yeah there's a lot going on picked up on I, I when I was watching it, the one thing that kept coming into my head was my bloody Valentine. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, and uh, but yeah, I really kind of embraced that whole scenario and everything from your cover art through to the film. Like takes me back to sort of 1984, 1985, yeah. going to the video shop, looking through all those dodgy. Uh, videos that probably didn't like hit the, <laughs> the heavy height um, and normally had some sort of really ridiculous image on the front and the minute uh, Alex contacted me um, I think it wasn't long after um, your South End screening no uh, I, I just I saw it and I thought oh yeah this is this is gonna be a bit of me um, <laughs> And yeah, so we look. I mean, I literally, it's the one of. I never ever look at a film like the day that I get it, but I watched it before the day was out. And then we kind of like was encouraging everyone else to watch it as soon as possible. I, um, think, I think at Horror on Sea, someone said about Romford, and they said, because you showed, did you show Banjo? Yes. Yes. So they, they said about that you showed Banjo, submit it to Romford, because uh, Banjo is where I saw Danny. Uh, yeah. who's in our film yes. and, that, and we love that film so that was yeah. sort of so yeah it was that horror to see someone said submit it to Romford and yeah. then I contacted you and as you say yeah we've got like a, a sinister link with horror here in Romford <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know we, we do a lot of horror stuff like throughout the year just random horror nights and whatever um, so when so let's just draw back a little tiny bit. Do you want to talk to us about um, how you picked some of your um, cast? Because mm. at, at your level of filmmaking, I'm sure you had a very heavy role in exactly who was cast in the film. And then, of course, the big question, uh, Mr. Kaufman. <laughs> um, do, yeah. you, do you want to? I do Kaufman. You can do sure. explain the rest. <laughs> yeah. So if I start, I guess to start with Danny Thompson. Um, 
We actually, we tried to shoot this originally in 2016. Yeah. So we had a script then, which was very similar to what we shot. Um, but we tried to get it off the ground and it, it didn't really work out, but we did shoot a bit, which is, there's a film within the film in this film. Yeah, Decorator. <laughs> called The Decorator. And we shot back then with Danny. Um, so she was one of the first people we cast. So we shot that skip forward a few years, decided we we're going to shoot the rest of this film. We kind of rewrote her, we rewrote a character within the film so that we could still use that decorator footage and bring Danny back. So that character was always there, she just wasn't an actress and mm -hmm. we just sort of reverse engineered it. So that's how we got Danny, so we actually went after Danny. The rest was more like traditional casting sites. There was, yeah, there was a few people. So Martin Payne we'd seen in oh, cool. um, Lonely Hearts a year beforehand, and we really liked him in that, and that's why we reached out to Martin. Um, yeah, there's, I guess there were a few people we reached out to. A lot of it was traditional cast. Yeah, for the, for the most part. Yeah. Websites, and also we had like Reese Daniel who plays um, Dave in the film, was like one of the leads. He runs a casting agency, so after we got him, he kind of got us a few other people, which was nice. Yeah, and Jamie Evans, who plays... Uh, yeah, Jamie. well, ja yeah, Jamie Evans, he plays a character called Jeremy. Weirdly, uh, we were, back in 2016, we were shooting, like, some promo art on, sea it, on South End Seafront, mm -hmm. so we had, like, this severed hand in the sand and we were taking pictures. And I was like back with the equipment and he came up to me and he was like, oh, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, I'm a filmmaker. And we got talking to him, we met him in a pub and we sort of stayed in contact. I helped, we helped him out on a couple of things. And yeah, so years later, we ended up casting him in this role. So that was sort of serendipitous really. Yeah, he was just a random passerby and he got chatting to us and then he ended up being in the film. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Lloyd was a sort of a, quite a long story really. It was. Um, so before we did Ice Cream on the Beach, I, I did like a little short film that I'd done the year beforehand um, and I played that at a festival and I met a guy there called Philip Rogers who does sort of like, he helps out with loads of indie film stuff in the area. Um, he was doing like interviews at the time, so he interviewed me for the film and we just sort of, we were sat in a bar chatting and like just going through all that sort of stuff. Um, as we just got talking about films and I mentioned I was a Troma fan and he mentioned that he knew Lloyd. Um, and that was kind of when we were gearing up to shoot Ice Cream. We were planning to sh start shooting about two, three months before that. So there was no, at the time, no plan to have him involved in any way. Um, and yeah, he kept saying to me, like, you should get him involved. Like, he would love to do it. You should get him involved. You should get him involved. And I think the reality of trying to put together a feature film when at times there's literally two of you working on it, we were just like, that's just, like, that's a big thing that we don't really want to think about. Let's not try, like, how are we going to get him over here? How are we going to get him involved in it? Like, it was, it was just a distraction we probably didn't need. Um, and then as we got closer and closer to shooting, I think we'd actually started a little bit. Yeah, we had, yeah he'd been on set, Philip, Philip had been yeah. on set. And, and it, the, the subject took half again, and then Alex just messaged me one night and was like, should we just try and see if we can get him? Like, because like, we'd heard he was in the country. We were like, should we just see what we can do? Like, if he can come and shoot a little bit part for us, great. If he can't, he can't. Um, and so... Alex messaged Philip and he was like, do you reckon you could get him in touch with us? And he's like, well, I'm sat next to him right now. I can ask him if you want. <laughs> um, so he did that. And then like the next thing I know, I'm getting like messages from my phone. He's like, are you able to film with Lloyd tomorrow afternoon? We didn't have a location. We didn't know exactly what he was going to be doing. We, we had a vague idea of how we we're going to work. Character in wasn't in the script. Yeah. So in the space of 24 hours, we had to, Alex was like furiously rewriting a couple of scenes to make this work. <laughs> Um, and then I was trying to get the time off work to actually be able to go and do this. And then we sort of met up with Lloyd on sort of like the afternoon in Soho by his hotel. He had, I think, about a two hour window to do something with us. Um, and we got there about an hour <laughs> beforehand and we're just running around Soho trying to find anywhere that would take us in to shoot the scene. Because we knew we could kind of shoot it anywhere because we, it was, without giving anything away, he's kind of superimposed over the film anyway. So we just we basically to... rotoscope him, so it doesn't really matter where he is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we were just going into any place like bars, <laughs> cinemas, restaurants, <laughs> like, can you just give us like a small room somewhere? Um, and I don't think we're allowed to say who actually took us in in the end, because I think the staff did it without actually getting permission, but someone did take us in. Um, and yeah, the next thing you know, we're just in this back room of a bar shooting a scene with Lloyd and his wife, and it was just 
Yeah, and then Surreal. half an hour later, doing the audio on our on our Zoom yep. in a in his hotel room because it was so noisy where we. Yeah, shot. well, we we I probably <laughs> noticed we redubbed the entire film anyway to sort of add to the effects. So we were like, okay, let's let's while we've got you, let's go do that as well. Um, but yeah, that was a nice afternoon. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's next? As in, what's next for Ice Cream on the Beach? And also, what is next for the pair of you? So ice cream on the beach. We're uh, we're in a couple more festivals, and there's still a few that we may be in. Obviously, with COVID, you don't know what's going to happen. But you know, we've we've submitted to quite a few. We've also I don't know what we can say like distribution. We're, yeah, it's, it's not anything we can really talk about too much at the moment. But we're in the early stages of sorting that out as well. Well, we so are we, speaking to a distributor. Yeah, so hopefully by the end of the year, we're looking at like actually having a release, which will be nice. It's looking positive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Cool. Um, future we've just shot a short film okay. uh, like a really short film like three minute short film which we did we shot it like on a mobile phone on a gimbal really quick one day yeah we, we wanted to do something that was like the antithesis of this so it was kind of like let's go as basic as humanly possible because although obviously ice cream looks really rough and basic and stuff it was obviously tons of work so this yep. was just kind of like a couple of actors us let's just spend an afternoon and make like a silly little short um so we've done that and we're currently editing that that's, well, that's called the allotment <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's a horror film set on a allotment yeah and then we've got a few sort of features in various stages of pre-production it's probably most looking likely that we've got the idea was we'd, that we knew we was gonna have a little break after ice cream we're gonna get writing and see what sort of what comes up first yeah um and we've got like an anthology film that we're working on that's probably going to be the next big project Hope, hopefully shoot it next year mostly yeah. yeah yeah i think trying to plan shoots at the moment is just it's so tricky it's kind of impossible but okay final question uh answer from each of you please you have three horror films that you are left with to watch for the rest of your life what are those three films you go first <clears throat> god that's impossible so so it'd be scream because for someone of my age, Scream probably, I, I, I don't know how old I would have been when Scream came out, but like 13 or 14. Matt, I, you're I, younger than that, surely. I don't know. It came out in... 96, right? 96. How old are you? <laughs> I don't know. I saw, anyway, I saw Scream when I was about 12. That's kind of, and that was kind of my, I, really, I think you find this more and more now, it's kind of my gateway to horror because obviously it's a film full of references. So I think what a lot of people, what happened with a lot of people is they saw that uh, and there were people that had knew all the references and now there are a lot of people who have seen it and they backtrack and find all, find out all the references. So Scream was like my gateway. Uh, so Scream would be in there. Halloween would be in there. Um, and I don't know about a third. I feel like I could kill a few darlings first. Um, maybe, oh, probably, probably Evil Dead 2. Okay. I'm going to choose Evil Dead 2. I'm, I'm always happy when someone says Evil Dead 2 instead of the original Evil Dead. Yeah, Evil Dead. I, I really didn't get the fascination with Evil Dead, but Evil Dead 2 I absolutely loved. I like, I, I like Evil Dead a lot, but Evil Dead 2 is just a much better version. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not going to go with my favourite horror films because the question was like, what ones would you watch? So, like, I think probably more fun, like, they wouldn't be necessarily my favourite films, but the ones I'd probably happily watch over and over again. So it'd be like, Turn of the Living Dead. Um, just because that's endlessly fun. I don't think I could ever get bored of that film. Uh, maybe Basket Case, because just <laughs> that, that was, without giving anything away, that was an influence on Ice Cream on the Beach. Um, yeah. And it's just one of the most bizarre films I think I've ever seen in my life, and I love it. Um, and then, I wasn't going to say Evil Dead 2, so you ruined that for me. I feel like my three were endless, endlessly rewatchable. Really yeah, I suppose. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, mean, I watch Halloween like, every year, probably watch Evil Dead 2. Yeah, that's a good point, years. actually. I do watch, I've watched Halloween every single year, yeah. so I'd probably put Halloween in there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We hope that next year you'll come to us with something else. Yes. And, uh, and we wish you the best uh, in a non-COVID-19 time. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm now with Hannah and Claire, um, and we're continuing our conversation about ice cream on the beach. Both of you, can you very quickly tell us how you came to the project? Nepotism. Good. Uh, so I'm... Alex's wife is one of the directors. Um, 
I have like an acting background, yes. so this is my first quote unquote professional credit, but um, I do have an acting background, so yes. yeah, it's quite involved that way. Uh, no, I'm Mike's wife, yes. so um, I very much got roped into doing everything that they needed doing. Uh, low budget film, you can do everything, so yeah. Exactly, but it's all about the support, isn't it? Yeah, no, it, exactly. was, it was great, it was really good to be involved and um, really, really fun. Lots of new things to learn, so. How, different, how difficult do you find it working with your partners on a serious note? Uh, more challenging than I expected. I'm not as patient. I have this like vision of myself as being really patient and I'm actually not very patient. Okay. Somebody's like, can you do that? And I'm like, why? What was wrong with it the first time? Um, which is possibly not very professional. <laughs> but, yeah. Probably that. Not, not as patient as I imagined I was. But yeah, no, I found it, I found it fine. It was, yeah, really, really good fun doing something different together as a couple, which was yeah. good. Do you share the passion for horror? I as... definitely do, yeah. yeah. So I love horror, like horror is my like, favourite genre of film. Like, I would always choose to watch horror, and it's something I'm really interested in. So yeah, it was something really good to get involved with something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So like, if it was comedy, like, I'd just be like, nice, but probably not for me. But because it was something I'm really interested in, I sort of threw myself in at the deep end with it, yeah. Are you, you're based in the area that you're, you shot? Yeah, yeah, so we all live in Southampton. How difficult, I know this probably sounds like a silly question, but how difficult is it to shoot in an area that you actually live in? How did you find that? Because I, I you know, well, I, we know, talk to a lot of filmmakers that sometimes have like quite bad experiences as a result of like ha working on your doorstep, so to speak. I, I actually think it was quite good because we had some local connections that we could then pull on to help with locations. So both of us helped source some of the key locations that were in there. Um, the, the guys knew kind of in their mind already of areas on the beach that they wanted to get involved in. So it was just kind of narrowing it down a bit. So I think from that perspective of location, I think it was really, really helpful. What I found really interesting though, was that places you know, like really well, and you just think, oh, that's just the beach or that's just whatever. Mm. And you can repurpose it as something completely different. Yeah. So it's obviously still gonna be a beach, but you're not gonna see it in the same way as you would normally. And that was really interesting just a bit of like a different attitude, a bit of set dressing, and it's somewhere completely other, which was really good. Yeah, yeah. And how did you find uh, filling like about an hour and 20 minutes of a character that is literally just going from turmoil to turmoil and kind of like ah, ah, all over the place? How, how, you know, how is that? How do you manage to keep that together because I, the thing that I noted when I was watching it was like you're literally just like going from one level of angst to another yeah, all I mean, the time. Building on my angst, all the, it was good, it was fun because I think it helped being with like your friends and like people you know, so it's not get too like carried away, and get yeah. too like method with it, but no, it was good. I didn't like, didn't like take my trauma away from it, so I'm fine. That's good, that's good. Um, what what else are you looking at now have you i mean i appreciate covid19 we're not really doing an awful lot no. but um what else have you been doing what are you planning on doing where have you i've written a short film yes that uh i think alex and mike are going to be directing um which is a christmas horror film which is like my favorite it's like christmas and horror is like just a match made in heaven um so that's it for me i'm probably gonna i'm in a short film that very briefly that they've made um, yeah, and I'm always around, unfortunately for them, so I'm always going to be happy to be in wherever they are. But yeah, apart from that, that's it for me at the moment. I'm not as creative as these guys, and they're all always writing, but um, yeah, similar to Hannah, they're always ready to get me involved. And um, yeah, it's been really, really fun doing something different. And um, we went out as the four doing their short film, The Allotment, the other week, which was really nice. Um, it was a lot more pleasant than ice cream on the <laughs> beach because we filmed that all in the winter um, on the beach. Very windy, very cold. Um, my job was mostly making sure the actors weren't frozen, um, whereas this was a nice sunny day, so that was quite pleasant. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really difficult to kind of pull that together in the wrong time of year. Any uh, interesting stories that you have that you want to share from, <laughs> from that? Um, trying to think. 
So we talked about this the other week. We were saying that there's actually, considering it's zero budget filmmaking, we don't have any of these sort of anticipated horror stories you'd expect from it. Yep. It's not like no one got run over or nobody like got food poisoned. I don't know. It's probably not great yeah. examples, but yeah, I think I think the good thing is we had a lot of our joint friends that were involved in. Um, doing a lot of the, the work in the background and I think we just had a lot of fun with yeah. with our friends really on set um, and all of the actors were great fun everyone was always in a really high spirit so we didn't have anyone being high maintenance or <laughs> I mean if anyone it was me but worked out right ignored that mostly <laughs> and and specifically you Hannah if you could um, be in any type of role in any type of film uh is, is there a film that, you know, if it was remade, that you'd like to play a character in? Mm, I can't think of a particular film, but I'd like to be, like, the final girl in, like, an iconic horror film. Yep. So, like, maybe, like, Laurie Strode or, I don't know, just the final girl in an iconic horror. Yep. So, yeah, anything okay. like that. Um, well, thank you very much for coming, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you uh, come up with next. And I'm definitely pushing to see the allotment here next yeah. year if possible. Yeah. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Take care.